Okay, let us continue. Raise your hands if you're able to hear me clearly. Okay, that's good enough. That is good enough. <clears throat> we'll be looking now at the respiratory system. So we have looked at the skeletal system and we are now going to look at the respiratory. Another core system. So musculoskeletal, respiratory. You will definitely see questions on these systems on the exam on Monday. Now, the respiratory system is responsible for the exchange of oxygen between the environment and the systems within the body. That's the main purpose. The respiratory system is divided into two sections. So you have what is referred to as the upper airway, and you have what is referred to as the lower airway. And as an EMT or EMS provider, you must be able to manage, so you must be able to assess and manage complications with the upper airway, and you must be able to assess and manage complications with the lower airway. So let's start off with the structures of the lower, sorry, of the upper airway. And you, you always start anteriorly. When you're learning structures, you start anterior, then you move to the mid portion, then you move to the posterior portion. So you start anterior and you go down. So looking at the upper earway, you have the nose. So you have the nose, which is anterior, and then you have the nasal passage or nasal ear passage. And remember, if you're not able to see the diagram clearly, you need to zoom in on your side. So the nasal ear passage is the mid portion of the nose. And then the posterior, the posterior portion of the nose is referred to as the nasal pharynx. So you have the nose, which is anterior. You have the nasal ear passage, which is that mid portion. And then you have the posterior portion of the nose, which is the nasal pharynx. Then you have the mouth. The mouth is anterior. Then you have the oral passage, which is the mid portion. And then the posterior portion of the mouth is referred to as the oral pharynx. So the oral pharynx is the posterior portion of the mouth. The nasal pharynx is the posterior portion of the nose. In the upper earway, we also have the epiglottis, which is a leaf-shaped cartilaginous structure that is above the vocal cords or vocal opening or glottic opening. So the epiglottis is above the glottic opening. The purpose of the epiglottis is to prevent anything that is not ear ear, sorry, <clears throat> from entering the lungs. That's the main purpose of the epiglottis. So that's your, your most fundamental structures are the upper earway. The nose, which is anterior, the nasal ear passage, which is the mid region, and the nasal pharynx, which is the mm -hmm the posterior portion of the nose. Then you have the, the mouth, which is anterior, oral passage, which is the mid portion, and the oropharynx, which is the posterior portion. Then you have the epiglottis, 
a leaf shape cartilaginous structure above the glottic opening that is present to prevent anything that is not ear from entering the lungs. And then we have be just below the earway, upper earway, you have the larynx, right? Now, the larynx is where the, the vocal cords are located or the glottic opening. And it is an important landmark. It is the point of the respiratory system that separates the upper earway from the lower earway structure. So anything above the larynx, is upper earway, anything below the larynx is lower earway. Mr. Barnes, you had your hands up. Go ahead. Tristan Barnes. All right, don't know what's going on there. Okay, noted. So that's your upper airway structures. Now the physiology, the physiology of the upper airway is fairly straightforward. You just need to remember WHF. That's the main function of the upper airway. WHF. So the, the upper airway structures are responsible for Warming, that's a W, warming, humidifying, which is the H, and filtering, which is the F, the ear that we breathe in. So it's responsible for warming the ear, filtering the, the ear, and humidifying the ear, making it moist when we breathe in. And that function is better carried out when we breathe through our noses and when we breathe through the mouth. So nasal breathing carries out that function better than breathing through the mouth. So that's the main function. So let's move down to the lower earway. Now, the lower earway starts below the larynx or glottic opening. Oh, before I move on to the lower earway. Let me just point this out. Now, the, the larynx, which is kind of the posterior portion of the, the glottic opening, the larynx, the oropharynx, which is the posterior portion of the nose, and sorry, the posterior portion of the mouth, and the nasopharynx collectively. So collectively, the larynx, the oropharynx, and the nasopharynx form what we call the pharynx. And the pharynx is the posterior portion of the throat. That's the pharynx. Now moving on to the lower earway. It starts below the, the larynx. And then we start to have um, cartilage located in the, the, the ear passage. Who is that? Mr. Jones, go ahead. Yes, um, can you repeat what, far, what, what forms the pharynx again, please? The pharynx is formed from the combination of the, the larynx, the pharynx, and the nasopharynx. <clears throat> All right, so with the lower airway, it starts below the, the larynx, and we start to encounter cartilage in the, the ear passage. And one of the first cartilage that you need to be familiar with is the thyroid cartilage. And that's often referred to as the Adam's apple. Right? It's much more prominent in males than it is in females. And it's where the, the 
vocal cords or glottic opening is located. Now the thyroid cartilage, it's, it's, it has a point anterior and it is open at the posterior end. So it has a point posterior, um, anteriorly, but it's open at the posterior end. Now, if you rest your fingers on the thyroid cartilage, when you speak, it moves up and down. If you put a finger below the thyroid cartilage, you will feel a soft spot that is referred to as the cricothyroid membrane. And we will go through these again as we progress in the slides. The cricothyroid membrane is an important landmark for surgical procedures for paramedics if we need to create an earway and put in a tracheostomy tube. So it's an important landmark to secure the earway. Just below the cricothyroid membrane, we have another cartilage, and that cartilage is the first cartilage in the trachea to form a complete ring. And it is referred to as the cricoid cartilage. Right? So the trachea, important cartilage that you need to be familiar with is your thyroid cartilage, the cricothyroid membrane, and the cricoid cartilage. The trachea eventually forms the bronchus. And then the bronchus divides into the right and left bronchi, which goes to the right lung and the left lung. The right lung has three lobes. The left lung has two lobes because majority of the heart is on the left side. The lungs are, are covered in a membrane. So there's a membrane that wraps around the lungs and it has an inner portion and an outer portion. The membrane is referred to as the pleura and you have the visceral pleura which is directly attached to the lung tissue and the parietal pleura, which is attached to the cavity, the space, right? The, rib, the outer cavity. So there's an inner portion and outer portion. And we'll go more into that as the, the course progress. Now, within that membrane that is wrapped around the lungs, there is some fluid there, and the purpose is the purpose of this membrane and the fluid is to allow um, fluid movement of the lungs when we breathe in and out, so it prevents friction. Now, as the, the bronchi goes into the lung tissue, it breaks down further into bronchioles. And then the bronchioles will have alveoli or alveolar ear sacs attached that are that are in a spider webbing of pulmonary capillaries so the structures of the the lower earway is a little bit more complex and there are more things that you need to remember so again the lower earway starts with the trachea but you need to be familiar with two important cartilages in the neck and the, the, the soft spot. So you need to be familiar with the thyroid cartilage and the cricoid cartilage. And you need to be familiar with the cricothyroid membrane, which is in the middle of these cartilages, right? So the, the, <clears throat> the thyroid cartilage is the first one, the membrane is below it, and then you have the cricoid cartilage, which is the first complete ring of the trachea. As the trachea moves down, it forms the bronchus. 
and then the bronchus divides into the right and left bronchi. At the end of each bronchi, as it moves into the lungs, you have alveolar ear sacs, which are in a net of pulmonary capillaries. You have a right lung and a left lung. Right lung, three lobes. Left lung, two lobes. Because majority of the heart is on that side. Now the space, the space between the lungs, the right and left lung, is referred to as the media stino. So the space between the right and left lung is referred to as the media stinum. And this is where we will find the heart and the major blood vessels, the vena cava and the aorta. Now, right under, right under the, the lungs, we have the diaphragm, which is a very important skeletal muscle to breathing. We also have the intercostal muscles, which is between the ribs, which is also important to breathing. Yes, Mr. Washington, go ahead. Um, sir, repeat about the space between the right and the, the, the left lungs. Media stinum. All right, sir. All right, so <clears throat> these are the structures of the lower airway. Now let me zoom back out. All right, best fit. So the respiratory system anatomy, the structures of the body that contribute to respiration, the process of breathing, which is a misnomer, but anyway. So you have the upper airway, which includes the nose, the mouth oral cavity, the tongue, the jaw, which is the mandible, and the larynx, which divides the upper and lower airway. Then you have the pharynx, which is a grouping of the nasopharynx, oropharynx, or larynx, or laryngopharynx, same thing, right? It is the posterior portion of the throat. Yes, Mr. Allison. We have a question, Mr. Allison, if not right. blow it. All right, not hearing anything, moving on. Then you have the, the lower airway structure, sorry. Then you have the epiglottis, which is a leaf-shaped leaf structure um, above the vocal cords, and the purpose is to prevent anything that is not ear from entering the trachea. The esophagus is posterior to the trachea and it goes to the lungs. All right, now the thyroid cartilage, often re referred to as the Adam's apple, it is pointy at the anterior portion, but it's open at the posterior portion. You also have the cricoid cartilage, which is below the cricothyroid membrane, and it is the first cartilage in the trachea to form a complete ring. The trachea ends at the carina. So the carina is where the trachea starts to bifurcate and divides into the right and left bronchi leading to the bronchioles. The lungs. The two lungs are held in place by the trachea, arteries and veins, and pulmonary ligaments, divided into lobes. So you have the, the right lung has an upper, middle, 
and lower lobe, and the left lung only has an upper and lower lobe. Within the lobes are bronchi, which breaks down into bronchioles, and then alveoli, which allows for gas exchange. And there is a membrane that wraps around the lungs. It is referred to as the pleura or pleural membrane. A layer of smooth glistening tissue that covers each lung and lines the chest cavity. Between the two layers is a small amount of fluid, pleural fluid, pleural fluid that allows tissues to glide smoothly. So you have the visceral, the term visceral means organ. So the visceral, visceral, visceral pleura is directly attached to the lung tissue. The parietal pleura is attached to the outer portion of the thoracic cavity. And then the pleural fluid is in the middle. Right, and this is a nice diagram showing where the thyroid cartilage would be, where the cricothyroid membrane is, and the cricho cricoid cartilage. No, muscles of breathing. The diaphragm and intercostal muscles are the primary muscles of breathing. The diaphragm is extremely important to the process of breathing. Other muscles that can be involved include the neck muscles, the abdominal muscles, and the pectoral muscles located in the chest. Now, the physiology of the respiratory system. Now, when we look at the function of the respiratory system, it really has three essential functions. So there are three things that you need to be familiar with, with the physiology of the respiratory system. And the acronym I use, or the abbreviation, is VOR, VOR, V-O-R that is associated to, with respiratory physiology, V-O-R. So it's V-O-R. The V represents ventilation. So the respiratory system is responsible for the process of ventilation. The O represents oxygenation, and the R resp represents rest. Respiration. So it's VOR, ventilation, oxygenation, and respiration. Do you have a question, Mr. Washington? Okay. Go ahead, Mr. Doheny. Mr. Duhini, do you have a question? If you have a question, go ahead. Yes, sir. Um, based on what you have, you have just said, with the roles of the um, respiratory system, is, would it would it be okay if, um, say, um, this question is asked and we said that um, the respiratory system is, is is also in charge of energy, like um, in per producing energy through um, aerobic and anaerobic respiration is that a well, uh, function that we can use? All right, Mr. Dehaney, Dehaney, what is your background? What is your background? Mr. Doheny, 
What is your background? Are you hearing me, Mr. Bahini? Yes. What is your background? All right. I'm not getting a response. All right, so what I'm going to, is everybody else hearing me? If you can hear me, raise your hand, please. All right, good. Mr. Doheny, is your mic working? Okay, you were just talking to me, is it working? All right, so I'm asking you a direct question. What is your background? What is your background? 